Yeah, so we we'll start the last session for today. Uh, there will be a short quiz afterwards so you can get the ticket to. Uh, uh, so Vinny is going to present uh, wireless modulator networks transmission schedule based on what you I'm Vinicius, I'm a PhD student here in the Institute of Computing, and uh, this is the research of my master uh, PhD thesis. And uh, I'm going to present to you what is wireless body error networks. I'm going to introduce this thing, and then I'm going to talk about what are the challenges in these types of networks, the proposed solution to solve those challenges of communication and the preliminary evaluation that we did, then we are going to conclude and talk about our future works. WBS started as a hot topic of research after the IEEE uh, have uh, made the standard 802.15.6 that is specific for this type of network. It is a standard that uh, talks about the communication between implantable, wearable, or devices surrounding the human body, and it's not restricted to humans. The devices in these networks can be sensors that gather and send physiological data, or actuators that act upon a command. It also has a hub that is a device that gathers this sensor data and that and sends commands to the actuators and works as a network controller for this network. Here we can see the topology of WBANs. In the first case here, it's the topology that initially was proposed by IEEE, a single hop star network. But after the initial tests, uh, just a few meters could be uh, harmful for the communication. So they also put a two star, uh, an extended topology with two stars on it. Since you have the implantable, wearable, and human body surrounding devices, you have different scenarios. The scenario that we call on body for the wearables, the scenario in body for the implantable devices, and off body for the devices that are not in the human body. And here we can see the most uh, the diverse types of devices that can be in the human body. The insulin injection, uh, blood pump, ECG, EER, uh, an artificial knee. You can have a lot of types of devices in this network. So it makes a very heterogeneous scenario. All these diversity of scenarios are also increased in, in difficulties of communication by the body posture changes and body mobility. This makes the wireless chain of characterization hard to do. So far, until now, we don't have a propagation model that can fully represent all, the, all those uh, WBAN scenarios. Just to illustrate, I'm going to show you the same link in three different activities. In the first one, the person is standing. And the second one, the person is running. And in the third one, the, uh, the second one, the person, the subject, is walking. And in the third one, it's running, he's running. And this is the different uh, wireless channel response that you get from these different activities. So it's very variable scenarios. In, maybe in the same way, you, you can change the characteristics of the wireless channel just by changing the postures and movements. So you have these changes of posture and movements of the body, you have uh, the wireless channel characteristics, and if you are going to communicate under this scenario, you have to make a tailored uh, solution to comprise different kinds of wireless channel response that you can get in different mobility scenarios. And this is what we thought when we proposed our solution. First, we need to classify the, the type of movement that we are performing. In 
usual activities such as walking, running, uh, sitting down, standing up, you have periodic movements such as the arms uh, swing or the legs swing when you walk. And we can use this extra information to enhance the communication. So we are going to classify the movement between periodic and non-periodic and use this period of information to schedule transmissions. To do so, we use uh, accelerometer and gyroscope data to identify the movement. And then we synchronize this its movement, the, the device's movement, with the hubs on movement. And then we can schedule transmissions in the best moments of the link response. And here we can see the high correlation between acceleration and wireless channel response. Here we have the RSSI of the reception device, the hub, and the acceleration of the wrist that, I, that is transmitting. And there they have a high correlation between one another. To evaluate this classification, we have used the data set, uh, two data sets, in fact. Uh, the first one for the hub that will detect and classify the movement between periodic or non-periodic and the second one to perform an analysis of the acceleration data uh, of the limbic, limbic movement, the arms, wrists or legs. The motion sense data set is comprised of 24 users doing usual activities such as walking, running, sitting and standing and they do 15 repetitions of each of those activities. And we have labeled as periodic movements the walking and running, and non-periodic the sitting down and standing up. So we can uh, later uh, use the period information for those two cases. The data is accelerometer and gyroscope data. To perform the classification, we have used Weka, that is a suite of machine learning data mining tools. And the initial tests were performed with naive base classifier, which is a non parametric interpretable, and easy to integrate in next in future works on mobile devices, if we, if we do so. The performance evaluation used a tenfold cross validation, and we can see that we have achieved a high accuracy of 98.5% uh, of correct classifications. Uh, in this small set of activities, we can see that it's almost easy to do so. So we're thinking that it's promising to do this classification of periodic or non-periodic movement. The analysis of the movement, uh, for the analysis of the movement, we have used the run and walk dataset, which is a sensor in the wrist of a user, uh, and he's running or walking. <coughs> so from time to time he's running or walking. And it's also accelerometer and gyroscope data. And here we can see the acceleration module per sample in, for all the data set. And we can see here clearly when the subject is walking or when he's running. We have analyzed first the walking movement. The first 100 samples of walking uh, is here. And we perform the fast Fourier transform to see the frequency of movement. And we have found that uh, the frequency of this arm swing in the walking movement is around 2.15 Hz. We did the same for the running movement and we found that the frequency is around 2.75 Hz. So we can use this period of, of movement to schedule the transmissions accordingly. To synchronize the hub and limb movements, we should have captured the same subject 
but we had used two different data sets, so we couldn't do that. Uh, it's going to be on our future boards to compare the movement of the wrist and the hub that could be on the pocket, or the trouser pocket, or something like that. For, to evaluate the transmission scheduler, we have used a stylus simulator. We have used this simulator because it has a draft version of the standard that we have talked about, and also because it has a real channel data, real experimental channel data. The channel data is collected by, was collected uh, of subjects walking in a treadmill, and they have uh, put on the they have put on the simulator the channel's average path loss and the distribution of fading in the scenario for each uh, each link. The channel is a 900 megahertz channel. The transmission power was kept as low as possible for the device that they were using, that was 0 dBm, and it, they were wearable devices, they were not implanted around the body. Here we can see the nodes deployed. Node 0 is the hub of the network, and the other five nodes are sensors. And here we can see the fade distribution. You can see that the fade distribution has a long tail and can have a high peaks of, of losses if we get a really bad situation in the wireless channel. Since we didn't have a time series of the channel, we have to do some emulation of the scattering. To do so, we have limited the transmission, uh, the fading effect. In the transmission. We have limited to 20 dBs, which, which takes most part of the fading depth distribution. And we have compared these results with polling and random access of CSMACA, which are both also included in the standard. The simulation scenario. We have used the narrow band physical layer, that is the draft version, and the maximum transmission rate for this scenario, one packet per second and 100 byte payload per packet, which is, which is kind of a small sensor like a temperature sensor or something like that, not a time series sensor like an EEG or an ECG. The transmission power was kept as low as possible and to minus 25 dBm in the simulator. The simulation time was 100 seconds. We have performed 20 simula simulations runs, simulation runs, and the results are averages in 95% confidence interval. Here we can see the packet delivery rate per node, and it's easy to see that the worst Nodes, the worst nodes in transmitting uh, power or, or, or the worst channels, they had increased the PDR heavily. In the node 3, we, we see that the proposal is the green one. We have, we have achieved around 80% of PDR, while the other methods were under 65% delivery rate. Also in node 5, that is also a bad node to transmit, uh, we have a gain of over 10% if we compare to Poland. The energy consumption is also enhanced, uh, the, the, not the energy consumption, uh, the energy saving is enhanced, since we have uh, less lost packets, we have also transmitted less packets in the overall transmissions. So we have saved energy by doing that. The downsides of using this approach is the latency. Since you have to schedule the, the transmission for the whole 
body movement, you have to wait to transmit when it's appropriate. So if you have really time constraint uh, applications, this might not be the best solution. And here we can see that the CSMSA that sends whenever the environment is available is the best one for those kinds of applications. Our conclusions are that the movements classification is promising. We can characterize the frequency of the movement using FFT, but also we can look for another technique, the more sophisticated techniques to do so. The transmission scattering enhanced packet delivery ratio, also enhanced the, the energy savings, but it can increase latency. Our future works, we are looking to forward to specify these modules of classifying and analyzing the movement and scanning the transmissions. Uh, we have to gather the, the data from hub and sensor to perform the synchronization of movements. We have to perform tests with other classifiers. We have to use Look for techniques to analyze the cycle and check the scheduler performance in different scenarios where you have uh, different types of movements, the periodic ones and non-periodic ones. Then we, are, we hope to compare and to be better than related works in the literature. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your presentation, Vinicius. Uh, I have some questions about the machine learning algorithm that you use. You said you use specifically the Bayesian models. So there's a specific reason why you haven't chosen or tested all the models, or you have tested all the models, and why particularly you choose that one. And another question is if you did some treatments about the data set, because like from the perspective, you, you should have more like non-periodic or more periodic than non-periodic. So you did some, try to compensate some something on your data set on that perspective. I'd like to hear about you. Uh, no, we didn't perform the tests with other classifiers. First we started with the simple, the simplest one, the non-parametric, that we could interpret the results because one of the problems that I see when I use machine learning is that we can't understand why the, the results are doing good or bad and using a Bayesian one. We can assume some, some part of that to the probabilities and the, the statistical variability of the, of the data. And the second one, uh, the second question is about the data set distribution, and we didn't perform any kind of uh, uh, pre-processing in the data set. We have used the data set as it is, and we have just gathered the data and used it. But we look forward to, to use a more realistic scenario where we have a distribution of activities uh, more alike as a person's real day to day. If anybody else has one question. Oh, yes. So I'm, I'm more interested in the patient test, of course, and, and it, it seems to be when, when you have uh, sensors to the body, you would, yeah, 
then the one that, that has, uh, for example, five would be uh, a fixed uh, distance from, from your curve, right? And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be swinging on your arms or legs. And so you would have a better result on it. And if you could use that to schedule the transmissions on the offline on the others, you might have a better result than staring at everybody for the same time as well. Have you looked at it? Is that this is the, what we talked in the last part in conclusions of using um, different uh, scenarios where you can mix uh, non periodic and periodic uh, devices in the same network. We haven't did, to done so so far. Uh, we have just scheduled the periodic ones and evaluated them. But if we mix them together, we can do what you told them. Uh, use the periodic movement and in the gaps of the, these periods, transmit the non periodic ones. I, I think that the, so, if you're measuring things from your hub, you, you have a hub's view of what the user is doing, right? and not a view of the sensor. So, the sensor may be swinging. So you, you may be sitting down and your, your sensor is swinging around. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so then you, you have different uh, different sensors. One in the hub to, to perform the, the classification of periodic or non periodic based on the activity, and another one to analyze the movement. It comes from each device on the on the lens. Edwin, I have a question. Uh, please, uh, have one for the last one. Uh, this data is coming from the uh, spooky cave. Yes, yes. This data is available on Kaggle.com. It's a social network, open social network of data sets. They have tons of data sets in there. And they're all open and public. And we intend to use uh, real sensors to, to measure this. Yes, yes. We are we're looking forward to this. Then forward, yes. No. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello?